After posting the last two videos, I was contacted by some viewers with requests regarding elaboration of some of the features we have already implemented in our UV Grid node and some of the things we have done with the experimental materials we've created in the meantime, specifically regarding the random functions of the node and how we've used the random color values to introduce random translation and random rotation of the contents of the tiles. As we left it, the random outputs were completely random. Random rotation would have taken place anywhere between minus 180 degrees and positive 180 degrees. The final random rotation could be anywhere between minus 180 and 180. And user Juanito on YouTube asked about maintaining the random element, but constraining the random element to a certain degree, to certain steps. For example, in random rotation, they wanted to randomly rotate the tiles, but only by 90 degree increments. And we can absolutely do that. Let me very quickly put together an example material using some random rotation. If you've seen the previous tutorials, you'll know that we do this with the stepped output. And then a converter vector math node set to add. We add the standard vector output to the stepped. And we use the result to drive the texture coordinates of an image texture node. We can then use a vector rotate node on the output of the standard vector. Set the type to Z axis, set our center point to half of our tile size, 0.1 divided by 2 is 0 0.05. And now we can rotate the individual tiles as such. I'll switch to an EV preview for a more responsive viewport. As in the previous videos, we'll use a separate RGB node. We'll use the blue channel to drive a map range node. Plug the blue into the value, the result into the angle, and we'll set our two min to minus pi and our two max to pi. And we once again have our completely random rotation between minus 180 and 180. Now, how to lock or constrain this random rotation to certain steps? We're going to use a very familiar mathematical operation, the snap operation. And now let's consider what's happening and how we're getting this uh, random rotation from our blue value. The blue value is in a range of 0 to 1. We use the map range node to convert that range to a minus 3.14 to a positive 3.14 range, which gives us rotation between minus 180 degrees and 180 degrees, meaning that a value of 1 will provide 360 degrees of rotation or a full rotation. So that would suggest that a value of 0.5 should give you half of a rotation or 180 degrees. And so for a 90 degree rotation, we should use 0.25. And it's really as simple as setting the increment of the snap node to 0.25, drop it onto the noodle protruding from the blue channel, and you're already done. That's it. You could set this increment now to anything you want. If you set it to 1, it'll snap all values to 1, and you'll get full rotation for all tiles, i.e. 180 degrees in the positive. If you snap to 0.5, some of the tiles will rotate from minus 180 degrees and as far as zero degrees. So in order to constrain our rotation to 90 degree increments, a snap value of 0.25, and there you have it. However, with a different texture, we can see how much rotation we're getting precisely. For now, it's a little bit confusing what's rotated, what isn't. Something might not be rotated at all. Something might be rotated entirely. Let's have a better look at that with a different texture completely. I'll remove the rotation. And I'll choose a color grid texture, which is an 8x8 eight eight texture, an 8x8 eight eight grid. We have A to H being 8 letters and 1 to 8 in numbers horizontally. 8x8 eight eight is 64, so we have 64 tiles in total. And if my grid is broken into 8x8 eight eight tiles, or 64 tiles, that means I should divide 1 by 8 to get my tile size values. 
1 divided by 8 is 0.125, as you may or may not know. Here we should enter 0.125 divided by 2 for the center point of the tiles. 0.125 divided by 2. I can reconnect my map range to the angle, and you'll see we are getting a random rotation. Here's one that hasn't been rotated at all. Here's one that has been rotated 90 degrees. Here's one that has been rotated 180 degrees. And here is one that has been rotated 270. You can immediately see that there is no incremental rotation below 90 degrees. Nothing is rotated by less than 90 degrees. There's no 45 degree rotation, 30 degree, none of that. In fact, if I wanted to snap my random rotation to 45 degree increments, then 360 divided by 45 is 8. So I could divide 1 by 8, and there you go. 45 degree rotation, 0 degree rotation, 90 degree rotation, etc., etc., 135, and so on and so forth. So that's how you snap your random rotation values to certain predetermined increments. Now let's look at doing the exact same thing for our translation. I'm going to simply remove all of this and I'm going to use my standard vector output to drive the image texture. And you'll see that because I'm only sampling the bottom left corner of the image and I'm only sampling one eighth of that image, I get a perfect representation of the first tile of my color grid and I get it tiled and repeated for every tile on the UV map. As you may remember from previous videos, to introduce random translation, we again separate our random color with a separate RGB node, and we'll use the red and the green channels because we want to affect both horizontal and vertical translation. So I can grab a combine XYZ node, plug the red into the X, the green into the Y, and I can now use a vector math node to add that vector to the standard vector. And that does give me my random translation, but it is completely random, giving you translation of anything between 0 and 1. As before with the random rotation, to constrain our random values here, we can use the math node set to snap yet again. And as before, we have to consider how many steps or how many increments we want to use. I have 64 tiles or a grid of 8 by 8, so I should only consider 8 for the horizontal channel and 8 for the vertical channel. 1 divided by 8, as we've seen before, is 0.125. I'll drop that onto my X component, and you'll see that horizontally the translation is snapping into the correct spot. We have no half tiles horizontally like we do vertically. So we can fix the vertical translation in exactly the same way as we did with the horizontal by dropping on another snap node set to point 125, and there you have it. You have complete tiles shown in each iteration of the UV map, no half tiles, no short edges, and all you need to know is how many cells essentially you want to use off your original image. Now this request was made by a user on Twitter by the name of JCFNAV, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. It could be JCF Nav, JC Fnav. I'm not sure. But thank you very much for watching the video and thank you for writing to ask for this input. And I hope you find this useful. In their case, they were given a bricks texture, which they wanted to sample random bricks from and display on their UV map built by the UV grid node. In this case, I'm using the color grid texture in which the individual cells are square, and so the increments for both the X and the Y channels will be the same. But that may not always be the case. JCFNAV, for example, would be given a texture like this one and be expected to make it tile correctly and create a bricks material to apply to walls and houses and so on. This texture is unusable for most purposes. It does not tile. It does not match in any way. Horizontal seams will be evident, vertical seams will be evident. This texture is essentially useless. However, we can transform it into something much more useful by rearranging the bricks into a stacked formation like this. And we have essentially transformed an image or a texture into a texture atlas.
This texture atlas is not ideal, however, as we can clearly see our seams here from the non-tiling texture that we used to begin with. But in this case, there really isn't very much we can do about that. We could take this into Photoshop and create some blending here to hide the seams, but I'm not going to go into that for this tutorial. It should be enough to create this atlas, which we can now sample randomly. We're going to divide this atlas into a grid with two columns and one, two, three, four, five, six rows. We can then choose a brick horizontally and vertically completely at random and draw that brick onto our UV map using our UV grid node. So let's set about doing that. Coming back to our color grid example. In this case, I was able to use the standard output and the associated tile sizes because what I essentially did was to take the entire image, draw the entire image over my UV map, and then use UV grid to split the UV map into tiles equal to the size of the individual cells of this image. So that worked quite nicely, but in the case of the bricks, let me show you. That's not going to work. Sizes are all of a sudden very different. And if we consider this geometry to be my wall, let's call it a one meter by one meter wall, these bricks are way too big. And I have to reduce the size of the tiles created by my UV grid node. A good size for bricks is 0.215 in width and 0 0.065 in height, which I can show you looks a little something like that. So now we want to draw this entire texture for every one of those bricks or tiles. Let's call them bricks for now. And then we can resize the texture coordinates to draw only one brick instead of the whole texture. And then as a final step, we'll use our random values pushed through the snap nodes and snap to a suitable value. And that will draw a randomly selected brick from the atlas in each one of our brick sized tiles here. To do that, we'll use the normalized output. I'm going to mute this add node for now. And when I connect the texture coordinates to the image texture node, you'll see that the whole atlas gets drawn. Let me remind you, this is the size of one brick. As a matter of fact, I can show you that a little better with a mix RGB node. And let me overlay the random colors. So here you can see that in the size of one brick, I'm getting my entire atlas drawn with two columns and six individual rows. So now I have to resize my normalized output with some multiplication. Let me get rid of the overlay node. We don't need it anymore. And preview the bricks texture so we can see our results. Let's drop in a vector math node. We'll set it to multiply and the X and Y values to one. So when I drop it onto the noodle, we should see no change. And now to get a correct brick size from the atlas, remember that the atlas was divided into two columns. So for the X value, I'll divide one by two, very simply. And vertically in the atlas, we had six bricks. So again, one divided by six. And there we go. We have our sizing correct. And now we're drawing one brick inside each tile of the UV grid output, which I can show you again, like before, by overlaying the random colors very briefly there you have it let's go back to our brick texture and now we need to introduce some random translation to select random bricks from our atlas the final step is to address the snap nodes here and these values are the same as these values because it's the same atlas the rows and columns are the same number so again one divided by two into the x component and one divided by six into the y component now we can unmute the add node and we have random bricks selected and drawn into the tiles just the way we wanted. At this point, because we are dependent on our random colors for the selection of the brick that gets drawn, we should have some control over that random color, a certain degree of control. It's always going to be a random color, but maybe you might want to change the set of randomly selected colors. This is less than ideal. Here we have matching bricks, which stand out pretty badly. So we can introduce a random seed function by tabbing back into our UV grid node, 
And we can accomplish this from inside the node by adjusting the Z value of this combine XYZ node, which would then go to our stepped output and to drive our white noise texture here. You'll see that if I change this Z value, the random selection changes as well. I can search through the numbers until I find an arrangement I like. Because we only have 12 bricks, this is less than ideal, and we will always see some repetition. But for now, that should do 0.44. We can't tab back into our UV grid node every time we want to change the random seed. And clearly, we might even have in one material several UV grid nodes, and we might want to assign them all a different random seed. So we need access to this value from outside of our UV grid node. We'll do that by adding an input socket just like this. And the job's done. Now we have access to the random seed value from outside our node. The final thing to do is to give our random seed input socket a name. Z won't do. Let's call it random seed. And there you have it. That's how you randomly choose from an atlas to populate your tiles with different parts of an atlas or texture for extra randomness in the output of your material. And that'll do it for this viewer request video. Again, a very special thank you to Juanito and to JCF Nav for getting in touch with their questions, and more importantly, for watching my videos in the first place. Thank you both very much, and a very special thank you to everyone who watches my videos and who has found them enjoyable and hopefully useful. If you do enjoy the video, consider leaving a like, and if you found it useful, please subscribe for more video content like this. And I will see you in the next video when we'll take the idea of the bricks texture even further by introducing a way to offset tiles to create a classic brick look. And we'll investigate some flat tile and brick bump mapping just like this. So we'll look forward to that. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.